Hello, and this is Sunny. Welcome back. Today my topic is subnetting a class B ID. Since I published my video subnetting is simple last year, I've got hundreds of nice comments. I want to thank you. I've also got many questions about how to subnet a class B ID. Here is the video. If you haven't watched my last video about subnetting, please do so because it would help you to follow this lesson. This video is very long compared with most of my other videos. Please bear with me for next 12 minutes and forgive my long and boring Chinglish talk. Let's take a look at example 1. Suppose I have a class B ID. 172.16.0.0 forward slash 16, and I want to create four new subnets. Here are three questions I'm going to answer. 1. What's the new subnet mask? 2. How many usable host IDs for each new subnet? 3. List each network ID, the usable host ID range, and the broadcast ID. And you can find examples used in this lesson below this video and you can copy them to a Word document for your reference as I discuss the subnetting process. First, let me talk about the given CIDR name forward slash 16. CIDR stands for Classless Interdoming Routing. CIDR means subnetting. When we deal with the subnetting, the class license loses meaning. That's why the letter C in CIDR means classless. Therefore, technically, it's not correct to say subnetting a class B ID or subnetting class C ID because the main purpose of subnetting is to break the class license so that we can have more smaller size subnets. Well, to keep it simple, let's still say subnetting a class B ID or class C ID because class license A, B, C are deeply stuck in our memory. Now let's build a class B table for subnetting an ID with the CIDR value forward slash 16. The table has three rows. The first row is the number of subnets. The second row is the number of total host IDs. The third row refers to the subnet masks or CIDR values. Let's fill in the blank cells starting with the first row, the number of subnets. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512. See the pattern? After the first number, the each number is twice the previous number. Thus, the next number is 1024, then 2048, 4096, 8192, and then 16384, 32768, and the last number is 65536. We are done with the first row, the number of the subnets. The second row is the total number of host IDs. Let's fill in the blank cells, this time from right to left. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. At this point, we might see the pattern. Each number is a half of its previous number. Or we can say the second row is the reverse order of the first row. The third row is about subnet mask. We use shorthand CIDR format. Well, we are done. We can call this table Class B subnetting table. Now we use this table to solve the subnetting example 1 mentioned above. We are looking for the number 4 in the first row of the table. Let's circle the number 4 and then circle the whole column, ignoring all other columns because we can answer all questions just from this column 
all these three numbers. The number four means four subnets. Sixteen thousand three hundred eighty-four is the total host ID for each subnet. Forward slash eighteen is the new subnet mask, and forward slash eighteen is a shorthand for two five five dot two five five dot one nine two dot zero. At this point, we have already answered two questions. The new subnet mask is forward slash eighteen. Each subnet has sixteen thousand three hundred eighty-two usable host IDs. Keep in mind, sixteen thousand three hundred eighty-four is the total number of host ID for each network. But the first host ID is reserved for the network ID, and the last host ID is reserved for the broadcast ID. Thus, the number of total usable host ID is sixteen thousand three hundred eighty-four minus two, which is sixteen thousand three hundred eighty-two. Now let's list these four subnets network IDs, their usable host ID ranges, and broadcast IDs. Let's set down the first subnet network ID. The first network ID is always the original given ID. We use the red font to emphasize the last two octets because the first two octets stay the same. We will use the number sixteen thousand three hundred eighty-four to get next network ID. Here we need a simple math. We divide sixteen thousand three hundred eighty-four by two hundred fifty-six. We get sixty-four, and we will increase by sixty-four in the third octet to get next. New network ID. Thus, the next new network ID is one seven two da sixteen da sixty four da zero. The third network ID is one seven two da sixteen da one hundred twenty eight da zero. The last network ID is one seven two da sixteen da one nine two da zero. Now let's look at the broadcast ID for each new subnet. Keep in mind the last host ID is reserved for its broadcast ID. Therefore, broadcast ID for the first subnet is one seven two da sixteen da sixty three da two five five. How do we know this is last host ID? The reason is next ID. Is one seven two da sixteen da sixty four da zero, which is the second network ID. We might say next broadcast ID is one seven two da sixteen da one twenty seven da two five five. The third subnet broadcast ID is one seven two da sixteen da one nine one da two five five. And last broadcast ID is one seven two da sixteen da two five five da two five five. Once we get each subnet's network ID and its broadcast ID, is not difficult to get its usable host ID range, which is anything between the network ID and the broadcast ID. That's all. We get all answers. I apologize if my Chinglish monologue is torturing you. Now let's look at example two. We will move fast. Given the same ID, and we want to create one thousand subnets. Here are three questions we are asked to answer. One: What's the new subnet mask? Two. How many usable host IDs are there for each new subnet? Three. List all network IDs, the host range, and the broadcast IDs. First, we look at the first row of the class B table. We cannot find exact number one thousand, but the number one thousand twenty-four works. We circle 
it and then circle the whole column because we only use these three numbers in this column. Now we can easily answer the first two questions. Forward slash 26 is the new subnets mask for all 1024 subnets. Forward slash 26 is equivalent to 255.255.255.192. Each subnet has 62 usable host IDs. Let's list all new network IDs, usable host ID ranges, and broadcast IDs. Well, the table will be huge, but we can try. Here we want to speed up since it's a big table, and however, the process is the same as example 1. Let's display the first four subnets, network IDs, host ID ranges, and broadcast IDs. Basically, 64 is the magic number. Each new network ID is increased by 64 in the fourth octet. The next four network ID are repeating in terms of last octet. The only difference is the third octet. It increases from 0 to 1. The next new four networks ID are repeating too. The third octet is increased from 1 to 2. We might see the repeating cycle. Every four rows has completed a cycle. And we want to skip the next hundreds of rows and only display last eight rows. Before I end this lesson, I want to point out the given CIDR value would dictate which table we should use for subnetting. If we are giving ID 192.168.0.0 slash 16, we will use class B table. If we are giving an ID 10.10.0.0 forward slash 24, and we will use class C table, and if we want to uh, subnet a network 172.16.0.0 slash 24, we are going to use class C table. Well, you are a very, very patient person if you are still with me at this point. I really appreciate your feedbacks and questions, and thank you very much, and see you next time.